only took like six years of asking, but they finally did it! And it's about time, that's all I really have to say. Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bicious RV. Here's some updated footage on the 2606 WS Rockwood, or the, I don't remember the Flagstaff model number, I seem to speak Rockwood, but Rockwood and Flagstaff are the same thing, so you might see a Flagstaff Super Light, I think it's called, same floor plan out there. What am I all, you know, back flipping over here? Well, it's, it's, it's a small thing, it seems like it's ridiculous that I'm making such a big deal about it, but I think it's very important. They have finally, put a true queen bed right from the factory in this sucker instead of the camp queen mattress that they've had for years. And th the thing is, they've always targeted this floor plan at or under 30 foot tip to tail, and it comes in 29 feet and change to, uh, tongue to bumper. When they went to the true queen bed, I thought they were going to have to extend the RV a little bit. I don't know what kind of crazy Wiccan Amish voodoo magic they pulled off on this thing, but they managed to do it and keep it under 30 feet. And I think that is potentially a game changer, deal maker, deal breaker factor that they now have, I think, in the correct column as com uh, compared to the uh, concerning column. Now, the thing is, everybody builds this floor plan. I, I will leave you links in the video description to probably at least, if not more, uh, than a half dozen similar floor plans from other manufacturers. Why does Rockwood continue to be one of the more successful? Well, it's because Rockwood does Rockwood things. Like, obviously, the True Queen bed. You can get this 50 amp and second air uh, prepped or installed like you're looking at today. Tank heaters, TPMS, Rockwood was doing that stuff before it was cool. Dual Asdell walls now through the Ultralight family. Previously, only the big signatures and the little minis had that, but now that's since been rectified. And uh, the front uh, pass-through cargo bay on this. It's, it's got like a full belly slide tray that comes out of this thing now to make accessing everything in that big compartment even easier. Factor and factory standard solar improved inverter this year and so many other things. It's, it's just my nerdy opinion, but I really genuinely, I'm putting it on camera, I genuinely feel pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the best overall average conglomerate, put all the factors together brand out there today is Rockwood. That's a big statement and I want to go back it up. So if you roll out of bed in the morning, this might be kind of sort of similar to what you might see in one of these. Keep in mind, we're looking at an RV with various options outfitted onto it. Like there's a, there's a lighter wood tone decor that you, uh, you, you can opt into on these. But like we're looking at one with like a second air conditioner and, and a bunch of other stuff like slide awnings on it. Not a standard by default base model build. But the thing is, even a base model Rockwood is still pretty swanky like it's just it's stuff that's not even optional that they do different and arguably better like a bigger microwave something you can actually put a normal residential sized dinner plate in it's just those little things are doing now i'm not trying to get way over the top here like most brands they're still not doing a side splash beside the stove but i mean again other than like northwood and lance there's not a whole lot that are they are using a bigger oven by the way that is a uh, one of those 10 plus cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridges. You'll see later, uh, I actually take the time to open those doors. They can open either direction. It's one of those bi-directional fridge doors. On this floor plan, I don't know that it does a whole lot floor it. On some floor plans, it's really helpful. Today, we are looking at the population controlling theater seat. I'm uh, a little surprised this last year uh, for the 2024 season, Rockwood appears to have changed some furniture supply. They used to have a fold-down armrest on a lot of floor plans, so it could be either cuddle-compliant or population-controlling, and it looks like we've since lost that choice. One thing to keep in mind, though, for my friends like Mr. Richard Vale, who watches all the time, the middle armrest and the two side uh, recliners are actually three individual pieces that link up like Voltron, Defender of the Universe! And if you want to take that middle section out or use it like an end stand, you actually can do that. There's nothing that says you have to use it exclusively, as you see here. Uh, above the sofa, they've maintained some storage. They also have some handy um, USB charging uh, reading spotlights. Now, those are not the blue-white, uh, you know, sleep disruptor lights. They're just the reading lights that you see right here. And you'll see that any window we're looking at opens for airflow. The um, This floor plan actually dates back this floor plan has been in production from rockwood for a long time and it dates back to when they were still often using floor heating vents in their rv 
re-engineering a model to peel heat vents out of the floor is actually quite invasive and they just haven't done it because they haven't necessarily needed to. Um, pretty much all the new models that they develop now, they they try not to put floor heat vents in them if they can help it. This is kind of one of those more uh, older holdovers. Now, I haven't flipped you into fisheye wide angle lens mode. This does have a mini barreled vaulted ceiling to it. Um, also, this TV is not only on a, uh, a pivoting swing arm, but it can actually dismount. And the, uh, the, the mount on the inside of the RV is the same as the mount on the outside of the RV. So if you want to take that outdoors and watch TV or take down the bedroom TV that we're going to see later and do that, well, you can do that too. Last I knew, by the way, the bedroom TV was optional. Um, I, I haven't seen an updated 2024 Rockwood build sheet, so I'm estimating that's still the case, but I, I don't want to give you bad information. Uh, doing things like putting a privacy shade in the door, Rockwood was doing that years, years before so many other manufacturers. That's kind of the thing. The phrase I like to use there is often, I'll say Rockwood doing Rockwood things, but the, the fact is, what the others wouldn't, rock wood. That's the best way I think I can describe the mentality of this brand. Now, obviously, anytime I say the word Rockwood, Flagstaff is the same. So Flagstaff also equally applies. I often call the company Rockstaff as a result, just because it helps drive the point home that they are the same. Uh, table and chairs option today. Standard would be a booth dinette, but it, Rockwood's booth doesn't suck. It's a free floating table if you want to move it around, and it's a fully welded aluminum cage dinette. Um, and when you get the dinette, you do get like uh, doors and drawers and things under it for easier storage access. Now up top here, you will always have a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. We happen to be looking at one today with 50 amp service. I think all the ultralights might be 50 amp now that I think about it, but they offer second air. And if you notice, it's centralized. It's not just a direct dump AC. So both air conditioners combined, like Captain Planet, our powers combined. Man, I tell you what, I'm knocking out the classic cartoon references today, aren't I? Captain Planet, Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Keep it up and we might do a little bit of Thundercats. Ho! Anyway, any Thundercats fans out there? I always thought it was very funny. Um, and not funny, haha, -ha, funny, interesting. In the pilot episode of Thundercats, lion -O began as a cub the same age as Thunder Kit and, uh, you know, the, 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 little, the young kid Thundercats. Um, but when he woke up from his little cryo sleep pod, he was no longer a little kid. But the other kids were still little kids. I don't know why I'm spending so much time talking about Thundercats. Instead, let's peek inside that closet right there because that is a walk-in closetainment center. It's a pantry, closet, entertainment, wombo combo, basically. And it is literally a walk-in. You saw that I was able to slip slide my way right in there like TLC. Um, going from cartoons to, to kicking out the jams. All right, we are just knocking out all the, the, the things today. The um, uh, kitchen over here, again, it is a bigger oven. That is a big stainless farm sink. It's actually, it's very inconsistent. Rockwood sometimes uses a, a farm sink in some models and sometimes uses a two sink, a double sink in other models. And... Not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it. I don't really understand unless there's something related to the plumbing in certain models that affects one and not the other that I, I can't really get clarity on from the manufacturer. So I, I don't know. Now, anywhere that you see a vent fan in a rock staff, you are going to get the big Fajita Friday fume fighter. No dollar store four inch fart fans for these boys or girls or whatever. Um, They've also, th this has a factory standard inverter which a lot of RVs are like inverter prepped. Rockwood just standardizes an inverter. Previously, it was only 1,000 watts. Was not enough to really run a coffee maker. And they, again, they've been listening. And they upgraded to a uh, an 1,800-watt inverter, which I actually think was pretty smart, pretty nice. Um, moving forward into that private bedroom space, this, I think, is probably the biggest, most significant update on this model, though. This has always been a Camp Queen model. It had always been a 60 by 74, and I walked in this thing, and I stopped, collaborated, and listened, and went, whoa, Nelly, that's a true queen bed. I went and grabbed my tape measure. I double-checked their website, even called Forest River Marketing. It is a true queen bed, finally. The thing is, there's still plenty of room to walk around this, so I don't know what kind of redesign shimmy shift around they've done with different things, but it's working. Now, again, I 
think the bedroom TV is optional in these. I know for a fact the bedroom central air conditioner is optional in these. What is not optional are the blackout roller shades that you have uh, through the bedroom, including over the headboard there. But what's nice is there's actually magnet holdbacks. They're tucked behind the pillows that I have sitting there right now so that the, the roller shade won't like, you know, swing down and bonk you in the head or anything like that. Now, both side stands have household and USB outlets. Not every single outlet in this RV is uh, run to the inverter, but the ones beside the bed, those are. The one thing is bedroom, it doesn't have actual cross breeze windows. It does have, however, this big closet slide here. So opening all that up, that is both dresser space and hanging closet space. But it, it kind of masks, like if you look over here, you see that there's one flop down door that I call an elephant enema storage pocket because you have to look like you're giving an elephant an enema to reach all the way up in there. Um, well, it, it, it just kind of goes with the nature of the beast because what they didn't want to have happen is they didn't want that drawer, it, like if they put a drawer there, it could theoretically wiggle open going down the road and get behind the, the closet slide and you couldn't see it. You'd have no way to predict it and avoid damaging it. So they didn't put a drawer there to make sure it couldn't get damaged. I would prefer a drawer, but I also appreciate that they've idiot-proofed my camper uh, to, to a degree that I couldn't break it. So I, I ain't exactly uh, mad at it by any stretch of the imagination. I do like how they put that TV if you do get it uh, on a swing arm over there for easier viewing. It's also really nice that this RV does have a smart command system that you can link up on your phone, but it still just has switches for like the living room and the bedroom lights. And the living room and bedroom lights um, can operate separately. It's not like some of these smart systems, if you hit the lights on button, it's all the lights. So if somebody's trying to sneak in the back door and you're still up here napping, is go wake everybody up. And that's a good recipe for cheesing everybody off. By the way, the thing above the light switch here that's called a thermistor, it is not an FBI listening device, although I like to refer to it like that. When I, when I meet a client in person, I like to say that. I go, yeah, it's an FBI listening device. And then I just don't blink. And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, no, guys, of course not really. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it, it basically, it's your, your thermal sensor. So the air conditioner or the furnace know when to kick on. Now you see that black thing sticking up right there. It's a magnet holdback for your sliding shower door. Cause think about it. If you didn't have something to hold that, that bathroom door closed right here, you wouldn't exactly have amazing privacy. So it's kind of nice that they think of details like that. You may have noticed, I think we talked about this. There is a privacy shade in the door. Now this some people go, wait a minute, well, how, do you, how do you mess with it? You have to open the door, go outside, close the screen door, put it where you want it, and then go back in or leave or whatever the case. It's a multi-step process. It's not awesome. But I think most people will probably find where they want it and leave it there and never think about it again. That's just a guess. I don't know that for sure. That's just my kind of nerdy estimation. Uh, up top here, once again, if you get the fan, you get a big one, man. You know, they don't do any of the small fans here. And even though the sidewall of this RV is only six and a half foot tall, you see how I can stand nicely in that shower? It's because of that mini barreled ceiling that they have. It's not a lot. It's just enough. But then again, there's more of those little um, user, like thoughtful kind of features, like a place to actually have some soaps and body washes in the shower. This brand still continues to maintain the shower miser system over here. Um, or uh, as I like to refer to it, the shower miser. Um, but neither here nor there. What will happen, this is a water uh, recycling system where if you don't want to waste fresh water from your uh, into your gray tank uh, while you're boondocking, you flip that little switch right there and when this thing turns from blue to white, like a 1990s hypercolor shirt, you'll know the shower water's ready. The thing is, you are recycling water back into your fresh tank. So if you're on city hookups, where you don't actually need to pull from your fresh tank, and you flick that switch, you are power filling your fresh tank. And you are power filling it with warm water. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, great space around that toilet. Especially if you slide that shower door out of the way. Absolutely fantastic space there. And uh, the way that they angled it I, is just really smart. But it's 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 shifted a little bit toward the, the shower, which I kind of like because that means that when I'm standing over here uh, by the sink space where you see all that nice storage, you, you can actually stand like right in front of the vanity here. And it, it just it just makes sense. It just works really well. And having like all that linen storage in that bathroom dedicated, 
That's, Rockwood and Flagstaff have been doing that for years, and they've been doing it very successfully. They make some of the best bathrooms out there, which is not, like, I've yet to have uh, somebody, maybe once or twice in my entire career, say a phrase like, I'm looking for an RV with a really good bathroom. Like, most people, that's just not necessarily on their radar, but that is part of the reason that I, like, I'm not trying to be cute. I sit on toilets and I stand in showers so that you can get an idea for like a real American's physicality uh, in that thing. And every time I hear the phrase real American, I start thinking of the Hulk Hogan entry theme songs. I'm just throwing it back to all the references. Real quick though, you see that countertop extension, that solid surface chunk right there? For reasons that are likely suddenly very readily apparent to you, uh, you need to make sure you fold that down before you close the slide. And that... You know, I, I like to go through the RVs at, and this is something I do at your request. So thank you folks, viewers, once again, for continuing to drive this channel. I didn't used to take the time to close every RV up that had a slide for road mode, but you said you wanted to see it and I'm going to keep doing it as long as you want to see it. So uh, I hope you appreciate it. Now, I just came out of the bathroom and I got to take like a sideways step, but I, I can get into that bathroom pretty readily. The kitchen is definitely very, uh, you know, snaptastic. Uh, in terms of your travel access, but no question about it. You want to get up to the bedroom? You got to open that slide. Just no ifs, ands, or buts. You save the ifs, ands, and buts for the bathroom, all right? And if we talk towing on this one right here, there's some half-ton potential for sure. But I think my towing vehicle recommendation is really going to depend on where you're going, like how far, uh, what are you going to encounter along the way? Because a um, little bit over 8,700 pound GVW and under 30 feet around flat land, very little wind, southern Michigan where I live, that should be late model tow package half ton towable pretty comfortably, especially considering the torsion axle and suspension package for that nice ride and handling along with the, uh, you know, the TPMS for the peace of mind while you're towing, having an idea of your tire pressures and all that. But if you're going to go through windy zones, and up and down serious elevations, you may want to step your vehicle up. It's really going to depend on where you live and where you're taking it, what kind of recommendations we might be looking at here. Uh, up front, doing, again, those little details that not everybody does, like the 30-pound uh, propane tanks instead of 20s. And I uh, realize I left my battery box sitting here going with all the lights on, but I'm not really worried about it because even on an overcast day like today, I'm basically breaking even on my charge. So, you know, not too awful bad. Now, as we uh, back up here, something I want to point out. In previous years, Rockwood gave you uh, two different exterior skin uh, options. That's no longer the case. The graphite and white seems to have won that fight. This is the standard. This is the only exterior that they're doing right now. Still some interior little slightly lighter darker brown tones in the woods rockwood's gonna always be traditional i'll be shocked if rockwood ever doesn't have some kind of uh brown tone decor um although they were actually one of the first way back when to do like a white decor and then it fell out of style then everybody went back to it and rockwood never quite did your input has also directed them to get away from the butterfly locks and go to exclusively slam latches and that thing right there how cool is that I mean, okay, so that you understand, it's not like on a gas drive. It doesn't open automatically. Uh, the RV's not parked level currently, and I didn't have it latched. I didn't do that on purpose, actually. When I opened the door, it slid open. It works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep rolling with it. This thing, by the way, has an 800-pound rating. So if you've ever seen the belly of a diesel pusher or the back end of a big luxury fifth wheel, like a Solitude, a Montana, a Pinnacle, or something like that, a lot of them have these elevated rear livings and kitchens with a cargo slide out, you know, from the butt side of the thing. It's the exact same hardware. You're getting on a potentially half ton towable travel trailer. Now, I also want you to consider when we're talking about towability, look at how much space and cargo and how big that is. You can you could put some serious weight in the front of this thing and you might really mess up your hitch weight rating uh, in comparison to like a, uh, say a, a half tons, uh, you know, payload capacity. So kind of keep that in mind. This is a split headed sewer monster though. You do have the kitchen gray outlet up here and you will see in just a second all the way in the back. Well, you can kind of peek it right there. That will be your bathroom black and gray. Black and gray, by the way, Batman's favorite colors, generally speaking. Every now and then, he'll flirt with a little bit of yellow, like in the Tim Burton films. 
And uh, if we go back to the televised Adam West show, a little bit of baby blue on that bodysuit, but otherwise black and gray. By the way, who's your favorite cat woman? I asked that question once in a video, and I mentioned I thought Eartha Kitt was pretty awesome, and the number of people who said, dude, you're dumb, it's Julie Newman. I was, it's not that I'm offended by that or anything. I was just, I was just very shocked at the number of people who just very aggressively supported Julie Newman as Catwoman. And I, um, I, I, I didn't know that that was such a hot take in the Batman fandom, but hey, neither uh, here nor there. Uh, we're looking at slide awnings, by the way. That is an optional piece of equipment, something that is not optional. If you look up top, anywhere that you see those big vent fan, well, anywhere you see a vent fan in a Rockwood, it's the big vent fan. And um, anywhere that you have the big vent fan, you get the big vent fan cover, which is kind of cool for that good rainy day airflow, which also really helps overcome uh, the lack of airflow that frameless windows will generally provide. It's a way of forcing air to get pulled into and cycled through the RV, and it, it, it works pretty well. Uh, Rockwood owners seem to generally be very happy with the airflow they get in their RVs because largely of those big vent fans. Now you've got both a bumper and a hitch on the back, which is cool, although if you're gonna put some cargo like a bike rack on that hitch, you might wanna slide that spare tire over a little bit. Just make sure you're not gonna block one of your taillights. I see people do that all the time, by the way. Um, I'll be driving around, I'll get behind somebody who's got like a bike rack on the back and we can't see your taillights. You gotta make sure those things are uh, unobstructed. A little just toe and tip there for you from your Uncle Josh. And look at the awning. That is, that is absolutely huge, the awning that they put on this. And by the way, if you want to get an idea of the construction methodology from start to finish, I've got some Rockwood factory tours uh, here on the channel um, that uh, you, you may want to check out. Because uh, you learn things like they use an all-welded aluminum cage structure. The walls, even the wall behind the nose cap uh, is uh, laminated. The roof is laminated, very sturdy, very walkable. What's interesting though, they don't use a laminated floor, but it is still aluminum framed. Their floor basically is a lot like what you might find on a big bad fifth wheel, where it's a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor deck on top of uh, an aluminum structure. And uh, they, they did that because, unfortunately, there were several years worth of Rockwood production where, you know, well after the warranty expired, they were developing soft spots in the floor. And Rockwood, I guess, could have just kept doing what they were doing and feigned ignorance, but they didn't. They did something about it. They added weight and they added cost to the RV, but I also think that they improved the structure. And I really like that it starts from the bottom up because if you want a good house, I think you always start with a good foundation. And they've done a good job of that. Now, one uh, last little detail here. Um, you uh, may have noticed the Goodyear tires, the TPMS. These are, uh, I, I always say one last detail and then I think of like three more things to talk about. It's a torsion axle and suspension system and it works different from a leaf spring. Like it's not, a lot of people will call this an independent suspension. And actually if you wind the, uh, the, the hands of time back far enough in my own videos, I have referred to it as that. And I was not correct. That is not the correct thing. I, I have since learned more about it. It's not truly independent, but it works kind of similarly. And it's probably one of the best suspensions for like highway and road use out there. Now, when the whole um, cargo tray slid open, there's a big brown box. This comes with a griddle and the little side table. So you got a place to put your platter and your spatulas and all that kind of stuff when you're done. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, like I said, there's oh my gosh there's so many builders that make a model like this it's crazy but because it's one of the most popular couples camping 30 foot things that's ever been built out there so i'm going to leave you some links both to check for pricing and availability as well as uh a um uh, other models, similar models from other manufacturers, whether it's Jayco, Grand Design, uh, Forest River, all kinds of things. In be well, technically this is Forest River, like a Heritage Glen, a different Forest River, whatever the case. Like, there is Ember builds something like this. Everybody builds something like this. Stick and tin, laminated, everything in between. So if you like the layout, but this isn't the right fit for you, we have options. When you're ready, we're ready. Give us a call. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy camping, everyone. Um.